Radio. And now, Ham Radio Concepts presents another exciting amateur radio video, keeping ham radio operators informed with a thorough look at the new products. Now, here's your host, Eric, KJ4YZI. What's up, everybody on YouTube? This is Ham Radio Concepts. I am Eric, bringing you another video on another thing that I had set up at field day that I didn't make a video on yet. So I have a rotator now. And before I put the rotator up, I wanted to check out and give you guys an idea of what this is. This is the DCU-3 by High Gain Programmable Automatic Rotator Controller. I have the HAM-5 rotor behind me, or they call it the HAM-7, which is that rotor and the DCU-3 as the HAM-7. Uh, this programmable rotator, uh, both of these are available at gigaparts.com or MFJ or High Gain. The links are in the description below. Uh, but this is a programmable with six different memories, automatic antenna controller that you can control remotely also over USB or RS-232 serial port using your favorite software. Um, I'll show you a couple of the highlights of this. I'm not sure exactly how to uh, you know, show you, okay, a rotator turns. You have an antenna array. The antenna is on top of your tower. You have a rotator that turns it. 360-degree rotation. But the, the magic is really in this DCU-3. The HAM-5 rotors our ham series rotors have been around. If you look at the eham reviews, some of them are, have been on there for 20, 30 years. They've been in service. Uh, those people put on reviews and they haven't had an issue with them. Those are a rotor you're going to see for a long time. They're built solid. They're built to last. And a lot of people say on those reviews, uh, I've had it for 25 years and I had it serviced twice, you know, greased up and changed out. Um, you know, uh, grease up the bearings and clean it out and it's still kicking. So this is a great rotor, but the magic, like I said, is in this DCU-3. Six programmable memories, all right? It's as easy as pushing a button and it turns into a heading that you have preset in the memory with an automatic break, okay? So with six programmable memories, uh, setting a memory, uh, a remote heading to 218, degrees, 218 degrees, the rotator will automatically go there. Um, once you have a couple of headings, and what you hear is the rotor, I'll show you that in a minute, it's right behind me. It's too hot to do these videos outside right now, so I figured, hey, I'll pull it in the shack here and and uh, we'll put it on the uh, table here and check it out. Um, but anyways, it's just as easy as pushing a button and knowing that you have Europe heading uh, 218 degrees or, or whatever you have it set at. Um, and that's roughly, you know, 218, 221. Uh, I could fine tune it, but it has been calibrated from the factory. Uh, and then when you want to go back to another frequency or another heading, pushing the button takes you to the next heading. So just as easy. Now you can do this with a manual rotator controller, of course, but it's really cool just to have uh, a programmable automatic rotator controller. Um, you can rotate it manually, left and right. All right, if I want to fine tune it. And you'll see there's a brake delay. Uh, the brake delay is cool because it, it doesn't slam into the, uh, you know, it doesn't hard stop that rotor, even if you got some wind going in the direction you're turning that thing. It's kind of got a delay to get that thing to settle. And then the brake clamps down. You can set that. I'll show you some of the menu features here. Um, and the, the, the local heading, so I can just turn my heading set here to, uh, to, We'll go 350 degrees and hit rotate. That's it. It's going. It's going to go to 350 degrees. It tells you your direction up here, southwest, and then it's going to go to west, and then it'll be northwest, and then almost close to north. Um, so makes it almost seamless, right? Automatic. A couple of features I do like, like I said, with the automatic brake, the coast delay. Um, if you hold the heading set which is your menu button. Go right into the menu here, okay? Uh, calibrate, offset, call sign. You saw I saw I put the call sign on my screen here. Uh, just a cool, you know, thing to have your call sign on there. Uh, reset to defaults. Brake delay here. I could set the brake delay to a higher number if I want. If I want to set it to four seconds. Um, now when I rotate, 
and I let go, it counts to four before the brake goes on. All right. Uh, one other cool feature, it's got a <clears throat> anti-sticky brake sort of feature to where if you, uh, you know, if in cold weather or if it's sitting for a while, instead of that thing releasing that brake and starting to turn, if it's a little bit stiff, it'll go left and then right again uh, in order to, to free that brake up a little bit because sometimes the brakes do stick. You know, you got to remember these things are in, in service for years and the elements. Um, but like uh, if you, you'll see if I hit the memory, you'll hear it go left and I'll show you on the uh, rotor left and then it goes right okay so it kind of keeps that it, it loosens that brake um, and there's your automatic brake uh, let's see what else we have in the menu here we'll take that brake delay back down I like it about two seconds all right and again it is USB controllable uh, ham radio deluxe will interface with this and then you can use remote software and uh, remotely control this rotor if you're Using something like the Remote Shack, this thing will work perfect with the Remote Shack that's available from MFJ, where you can adjust it with your phone uh, using uh, touchtone DTMF signals on your phone to send commands to the Remote Shack, which will interface in this with the serial port and turn the rotor to a certain heading. You can even type in 250 on the phone and it'll turn it to 250. Um, Sleep delay, so it, it goes to sleep. If it's sitting here for a while, the screen will dim out and it'll go to sleep. The coast set, so, whoops. The coast set, uh, it kind of, uh, you know, coasts instead of locking right down. You know, when you're turning a large array, something like that Ham 5, you're turning a 15 square foot array, you don't want to stop that thing right away. I mean, that'll, you're talking about busting some gears or shearing some pins. Uh, so it kind of coasts where it needs to be. Um, and uh, so, you know, coast set is is uh, a pretty good thing to have, you know, when you're turning a large array. Um, so, let me show you the back. Uh, here's the call sign here. You could, you know, oops. Well, I guess I gotta set my call sign again. Uh, K. J. Four. Y. Z. I. There you go. KJ4YZI. All right. So uh, let's check out the uh, the back of this, and then we'll show you what it's uh, doing with this rotor here. Here's the back of it. Here, 110 volt in uses the standard uh, computer plug looking. Uh, you know the standard computer plug that goes in the towers or monitors. Um, your fuse, your ground, your RS232 input and output. So. That can be used, like I said, for interfacing with remote software or the USB. This is uh, firmware upgradable. They do have firmwares available on High Gain website so that you can keep your firmware up to date if they fix any bugs. Uh, it does use, here's the output, it does use an 8-pin uh, rotator cable. It does show you in the manual the schematic for the cables, okay, <laughs> if you choose to build your own. So it's got the four, the uh, four pins horizontal four pins vertical now keep in mind it does say in here uh, and it says right on here actually carefully follow all wiring instructions between the rotator and control unit incorrect wiring will burn out the potentiometer and void the warranty it does say in the book you want to make sure you know what you're doing if you choose to make your own cable I just assume buy a cable I bought a eight, uh, 30 foot 8 pin cable here and uh, it interfaces right on there and, and I'm done uh, but a lot of people like to homebrew, and that's what keeps the hobby interesting is homebrewing. So, uh, you know, you have the option of building your own cable, and the pinouts are on the manual. So, let me, uh, let's take a look at the rotator itself and uh, what it's doing. All right, so taking a look at the rotator itself, um, a HAM 5 rotor. Now, remember the, the manual or the specifications online call it a HAM 7. The HAM 7 would be the rotor. The ham five rotor with the DCU three. Um, so what I have here, because as I said, it is way too hot outside in Florida right now to make videos outside. So uh, I haven't mounted this outside yet, but this is what I had at field day. I had this on the MFJ 1919 tripod. This tripod uh, handles 100 pounds, extends up to 7.8 feet, and uh, opens to like five feet in the bottom, or 690 square inches. 
it, it has a huge platform. But uh, so I have this mounted on here with my homebrew ingenuity here with just a, I used like some rubber from this rubber mat and made a uh, sort of like a bushing because uh, the mast on the, uh, on the tripod wasn't big enough to fit in there. So I probably could have got something a little more professional, but that was temporary and it's not going anywhere. It's not slipping. So it's been fine. Um, here is the other uh, side of the rotator cable, the eight pin. As I told you, if I can get this off here and show you, um, okay, eight pin, and uh, it does have a, a nice weather seal inside with rubber, so it does, uh, you know, keep the elements out, the moisture and all that. So looking at the rotor as well, I do have the MSHD from the manufacturer. Uh, that is the mast support heavy duty kit. Um, so basically, the rotor. If you had this on a tower, the rotor itself, here's the base of the rotor, okay? And that would mount, you'll see the bolts here. These, this would mount on a rotor plate on the tower with four bolts, and that'll be at the top of the tower. Now, I don't have it on the tower, so I installed this optional MSHD kit, which enables me to mount it on a mast. I might end up doing that. I'm not sure if I'm putting the tower back up. I had some issues, and uh, until I, you know, uh, get another house one day in my own house and, and I can use this on a mast. I have a, a pretty large mast I can put it up there with a loop antenna what I might do or a, uh, a couple antennas on there some a VHF, UHF, Yagi and maybe a loop. <clears throat> so uh, anyways uh, looking at the rotor up top here this is the hardware that comes with it for putting in uh, up to a two inch mast with the two U-bolts, lock washers and nuts and uh, you know as I said before, these these reviews on these things, you can check them out for yourself. Um, there's some people that have had them up in service for 25 years and, and had them greased a couple times and they're still rocking and rolling. Uh, they're built to last, they're built solid. 98 bearings inside here. So it's got plenty of support with those bearings to turn around smoothly with even the greatest wind load. If you're talking about specs, uh, mounted on a tower, you're looking at like 15 square feet of antenna array if it's bolted on a tower plate that you can turn with this. On a mast, you cut that in half. So you make it seven and a half square foot uh, rating of antenna on a mast because you don't want to turn some great big, you know, nine element uh, Yagi or HF beam on a mast. All right. So the, the load is better on a tower plate if you're interested in putting it on a tower. Um, so, uh, it's uh, 800 inch pounds of torque that it can turn. Uh, it does say on the manual, and I didn't understand exactly what it said, but it said, uh, I, I took it that if it's mounted on a rotor, I mean on a rotor plate, it had 2,800 foot, 20, foot pounds of torque, but you can check out the manufacturer's specs. It'll show you there on there. 800 inch pounds and then 2,800 foot pounds. Uh, I guess that's mounted on the tower itself. Um, so, let me show you uh, what it you know what it looks like in action, just so you can see it. So to give you an idea of that brake delay I was telling you about, uh, the brake sticky brake delay. You know, if I hit uh, a memory here, all right, watch what the rotor does. And it goes back and it goes to the left and to the right. Uh, let's add a memory here. All right, so you see the rotating speed not that loud. It'll have a little bit of noise with the gears inside and the uh, bearings and all that, but it's not noisy at all. I mean, if that thing is grinding and screaming, then you might want to have it serviced if you've had one for a long time. Uh, this one's not so loud. There's the brake, all right? Um, and uh, I know this isn't set up in my room exactly uh, to, you know, uh, zero degrees heading north and all that, but uh, you get an idea with it, you know? Um, so an awesome piece, um, maybe down the road when I get some, uh, you know, turn this again here. When I get some, uh, other, you know, videos going on, when I start making videos outside, I'll take another video of this and see how it's working and, uh, see what I have on it. And at least you get to see if you're interested in a ham seven or ham five or DCU three, hopefully, uh, this gives you an idea of what you're looking at. A lot of torque in that thing.
and stop one two three there's the break and thanks for watching check out the other videos check out uh, Facebook give me a like on Facebook share subscribe tell a bunch of people about videos and uh, more videos on the way 7-3 from KJ4YZI